the Pebble Hill Plantation, gracious and vital with the South's rich traditions, a home rich in both art and history. The overall impression one receives from this remarkable plantation is more felt than defined. The area that came to be known as Southwest Georgia was a wilderness of tall pines and red hills in the early 1820s. Thomas Jefferson Johnson was one of the first settlers to come to this strange frontier as an enterprising young man. He acquired the initial Pebble Hill acreage in 1825 and built the first house on the property in 1827. When Johnson died in 1847, his daughter, Julia Ann, inherited Pebble Hill at 21 years of age. She married John William Henry Mitchell in 1849, and together they continued to operate Pebble Hill as a successful working farm. When Mitchell died in 1865, the strong-willed Julia Ann was determined to continue the farming operations on Pebble Hill. Around the same time in the late 1880s, Thomasville was enjoying popularity as a major winter resort. Many northern visitors were coming by private rail car to spend the winter months in this little South Georgia community. Visitors were attracted to the area for its good climate, abundant hunting, and accessibility by rail. Thomasville was progressive in its thinking and built large hotels to accommodate the winter guests. While many of these visitors stayed in the hotels, many others purchased available properties. Plantations that were working farms were sold to the Northerners and Thomasville's history was changed forever. In 1896, Pebble Hill was sold to Howard Melville Hanna of Cleveland. Hanna gave the Pebble Hill property to his daughter, Kate Benedict Hanna Ireland in 1901. Kate was married twice. Her first husband was Robert Livingston Ireland. Their children were Robert Livingston Ireland Jr. and Elizabeth Ireland. Her second marriage was in 1923 to Perry Williams Harvey. Kate made major improvements on the plantation, expanded the acreage, and filled the house with guests throughout each winter season. Most of the present-day buildings designed by architect Abram Garfield, son of U.S. President James A. Garfield, were constructed during the time that Kate owned the property. The first structure Kate added was the log cabin, which was built in 1901. It served as a school where Kate's children and children of her guests were tutored. And we were sent down here a lot in the winter time and we were tutored quite, quite often, and uh, we just had a wonderful time. Kate started the Pebble Hill Jersey Herd in 1920 and developed it into one of the finest herds in the country, winning numerous ribbons and trophies at state fairs and other competitions. The cow barn, patterned after the architecture of the University of Virginia, was built in 1928 to accommodate the Jerseys. Tragedy struck in 1934 when the 1850 portion of the main house was destroyed by fire. The loggia wing, added in 1914, was saved from the fire and was included in the plans for the soon-to-be rebuilt home. The new house was constructed in the following 18 months and was completed in January 1936. Kate died in May of 1936 and her daughter Elizabeth, or Pansy as she was known, became Pebble Hill's mistress. Pansy preserved what her mother had created and enjoyed Pebble Hill as her main residence until her death in 1978, continuing many traditions established by her mother, such as Easter celebrations and Christmas parties at Piney Grove Church for the staff. 
the big deal for us was, was Christmas, of course. Mm -hmm. And at one time when my, my grandmother's nephew came with a friend and instead of getting up promptly so we could go to the Christmas tree early and get the presents, why they were allowed to sleep late. So we had to pace up and down what we call the loggia, the long hall, waiting to get, to get in to see what Santa Claus had left for us. Pansy was married in 1946 to Parker Barrington Poe. Mr. and Mrs. Poe did not have children, but they did have children of the four-legged variety. A great animal lover and an inveterate collector, Pansy amassed numerous collections that all point to her passion for the sporting life. She was an accomplished horsewoman and became one of the country's outstanding polo players. Pansy was a, very much of a, of a to, tomboy. Uh -huh. And she played polo with men and, and she was, you know, she was, she was a bully. <laughs> like her mother, she was a gracious hostess and entertained regularly at Pebble Hill. Many of Kate's guests continued to be invited to the plantation during Pansy's tenure. President Dwight Eisenhower and Mrs. Eisenhower were guests on several occasions. Jimmy Carter was a guest during the time that he was governor of Georgia, and the Duke and Duchess of Windsor were among other notable visitors. In the 1950s, Pansy established the Pebble Hill Foundation, a private foundation which she endowed at her death, her will dictated that the Pebble Hill property would go to the foundation and that Pebble Hill would become a museum open to the public. Her desire was to share the Pebble Hill she loved so dearly and to preserve it as a tangible glimpse into the lifestyle that her family enjoyed. Pebble Hill was first opened as a museum in October 1983 Visitors come from around the world to marvel at the wonderful main house with more than 40 rooms, which are furnished entirely with Hanna family furnishings, and to be amazed at the stately architecture. Bringing the outside in is a wildlife mural in the big room, depicting the flora and fauna of southwest Georgia. It is a natural favorite among visitors. Family's love of nature is spoken through the art and the many different collections in the main house. The elegant main hall is dressed with 33 Audubon lithographs and the main dining room is a room that was often filled with guests in Pebble Hill's heyday. Some 45 to 50 weddings and receptions are held on the grounds each year, as well as holiday events, outdoor concerts, and family outings. Even corporate and civic events are held on the plantation. A recently renovated barn gives Pebble Hill its first indoor facility for special events. This state-of-the-art, approximately 4,000-square-foot structure is centrally heated and air-conditioned. It has a large fireplace, two terraces, and a magnificent view of Pebble Hill's natural surroundings. Offering the latest in audiovisual capabilities and internet connectivity, it is a location that has unlimited possibilities in its usage. Pebble Hill, in all of its beauty where pines and magnolias throw long shadows across lush green lawns and gardens, is a place where history can become a part of the modern world. More than a plantation, located in Thomasville, Georgia's backyard, there is a legacy of women with all of its grace and beauty. 
a true Southern treasure for all to enjoy today.